In this video, I will demonstrate my method for multi-grain sourdough bread. Hi, I'm Ron and thanks for clicking on this video and welcome to this Montana working cattle ranch. In this picture I'm sitting on the porch of the cookhouse where I was the ranch cook a few summers ago. And this is my view from the porch of the cookhouse. But back to multi-grain sourdough bread. Inclusions change simple sourdough bread into multi-grain sourdough bread. Some things you might find in multigrain bread are barley, wheat, oats, as well as various seeds, such as sunflower seeds or pumpkin seeds. The complete ingredient list of the items I use in this video will be listed in the description. Okay then, let's begin. My sourdough starter sits on the kitchen counter. Sometimes I feed the starter the night before so I can mix my sourdough first thing in the morning. And sometimes I feed my starter in the morning and mix my sourdough around noon. I usually keep two and sometimes three containers of sourdough starter, one on the kitchen counter and the rest in the fridge. Then I rotate the jars of starter every week or two. My sourdough starter has doubled in volume and it's time to mix the sourdough. Most of the time, I use a digital scale and measure my ingredients by weight because I feel it's more precise, instead of using cups and spoons and measuring by volume. Also, I find it just as easy to mix two loaves as it is to mix one, and this Pyrex 4-quart bowl is the perfect size for my two-loaf recipe. I've long since consumed the original bottled water, but continue to use these plastic containers with filtered water from my fridge door. Somebody asked me if I stir my starter before mixing it into the sourdough. I don't, but I doubt it would make any difference if I did. The flour I use to feed my sourdough starter is a mixture of one-third whole wheat flour, one-third all-purpose flour, and one-third rye flour. I keep the mixture in this number 10 silver can and in the freezer. The flour I use is purchased from Costco, currently 25 pounds is $8, and it is milled by Lehigh Mills. I use bread flour in my sourdough bread. It has been my experience that there is a bigger difference between brands of flour than there is between types of flour, and I've had the most success in baking bread when using a good quality of flour. I've never used iodized table salt in my bread baking and recently have switched from using sea salt to using kosher salt, but I'm comfortable using either one.
For the next couple of hours and at 30 minute intervals, I'll perform two or three stretch and folds, followed by a few coil folds. In between folding, the dough sits in this proofing box. Although the current setting is at 82 degrees, I try to keep the internal temperature of the actual dough between 75 degrees and 78 degrees during bulk fermentation. Bulk fermentation is the time after mixing and before shaping. Immediately after mixing the dough, I'll soak the seeds. Today I'm including flax seeds, sesame seeds, and sunflower seeds. Actually, these are the only seeds I've ever used, and I do enjoy their taste and texture. But I would be interested to know what grains and or seeds you include in your bread. Please share your ingredients in the comment section below the video. My seeds, soaking in water, will sit in this 2.5 quart Pyrex bowl with the lid on for 2-3 to three hours. It's been 30 minutes since mixing the dough and time for the first stretch and fold. In addition to building structure in the dough, I'm also feeling for any pockets of flour that didn't get hydrated during the initial mixing and may need a little spray of water. Off camera and at 30 minute intervals, I perform two more stretch and folds and two coil folds. On my YouTube channel, I have this video devoted entirely to the folding process, which you may find useful. Here's today's dough immediately after mixing. And here it is two hours later after a series of foldings. It has become as silky smooth as warm taffy. This transformation is always amazing to me. The seeds have been soaking for over two hours, have been drained and rinsed, and it's time to add them to the dough. With my fingers, I'm attempting to spread the seeds throughout the dough. This poking motion is intended to prevent any large pockets or clumps of seeds sticking together. Care should be taken not to tear the dough.
the dough has rested for about two hours, has increased in volume by about a third, it's time to pre-shape, shape, put in bannetons, and into the fridge overnight. This is a two loaf recipe and I'll weigh the dough to ensure each loaf is of equal weight and size. It's the following day and time to bake the sourdough. The bread sling makes it easy to get the sourdough in and out of the hot Dutch ovens. Using a razor blade, I score the dough with one slice across the top side to side. The dough goes into the hot cast iron Dutch ovens and the Dutch oven will go in the kitchen oven at 450 degrees for 30 minutes. I pull the dough around the edges so it releases easily from the banneton. One more slice across the top with some extra slices on the side for decoration. and into the Dutch oven, lid on, and into the kitchen oven for 30 minutes. It's been 30 minutes. Take the lid off. Let's see how the dough looks. Oh my! Isn't that beautiful? Okay, I'm going to put the bread only back into the oven. Reduce the temperature to 400 degrees. It was at 450. And bake for another 10 to 12 minutes. The bread is finished baking, and isn't it gorgeous? Now let's check the temperature. We want anything over 200. 203, perfect. Isn't that bread simply amazing? Thanks again for watching this video. Please remember to subscribe 
leave a comment, and make it a great day.